بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي كتب الآثار ونسخ الآجال القلوب عنده مفضية والسر عنده علانية الحلال ما أحلل والحرام ما حرم والدين ما شرع والدين ما شرع والأمر ما قضى وهو الله الرؤوف الرحيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لتبلون في أموالكم وأنفسكم ولا تسمعون من الذين ولا تسمعون من الذين لتبلون في أموالكم وأنفسكم ولا تسمعون من الذين أشركوا أذى كثيرا وإن تصبروا وتتقوا فإن ذلك من عزم الأمور وقال جل وعلا فاصدع بما تؤمر وأعرض عن المشركين إن كفيناك المستهزئين الذين يجعلون مع الله إلها آخر فسوف يعلمون ولقد نعلم أنك يضيق صدرك بما يقولون فسبح بحمد ربك وكن من الساجدين واعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم صل من قطعك واعف عمن ظلمك وأحسن إلى من أساء إليك أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم I begin in the name of Allah, the Almighty, the most gracious, the most merciful salutations upon the chosen one, Muhammad, his companions, his family members, and those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. And I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Respected brothers and sisters, in last week's topic, we discussed about being a practical believer and showing Islam, Islam by your behavior. And as we know that there have been many anti-Islamic campaigns that have been running around and the rallies that our people are taking out against the people of the faith. It is indeed their misunderstanding, their ignorance in regards to the beauty which Allah and His Prophet والسلام, has introduced to the humanity. Just as a regular fundraiser, when he stands on the podium to collect funds for a Muslim organization or a masjid, and he starts his topic out with telling the congregation that, oh Muslims, I have a good news and a bad news. The good news is that the funds that we need to fulfill our needs in regards to building an organization or funding the organization or taking out the debt of the organization the good news is we have those funds available. But the bad news is that those funds are still in your pockets. So I will take that same stand and the same platform and I will convey to the Muslims that the good news is that we have the formula to remove any anti-Islamic campaign that is happening around the world. And any type of negativity that has been spreading around the world for the people who possess the faith, the good news is with the blessing of Allah that we have the formula to remove that. 
But unfortunately, the bad news is that those formula have still been in the pages of the books and in the texts of the hadith and the text of the Quran. And unfortunately, we are not able to implement those into our lives. We have not taken the nuqush into nufus. Nuqush is writing. Nufus is life, your soul. So we haven't changed the nuqush to implement or to come into the nufus. And due to the fact that we are, failed to, we are failing to do that, whatever we see around us, it's due to that. Today my focus, it's going to be on the behavior of the Prophet ﷺ while in Mecca and Medina against those who started the campaign of assassinating him. Who started the campaign to give all types of difficulties to the believers. Starting from the time of Mecca, going on to the journey of Hijrah, migration, and even in the life while he was in the Medina al Munawwarah. What was his behavior against those who tried their most best to harm him? How did these people mind changed regarding Islam, regarding the Prophet, and regarding the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? As I mentioned, that we have the formula available, but unfortunately, we don't have, we don't have the ability or we're not able to take that formula and implement it. Number one, due to our own ignorance, lack of interest, lack of education, and not contributing our life, time, and wealth for the sake of deen. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he decided to do his migration, And in the journey of his migration, there were many incidents that happened. And I would like to point out one of the incidents, and you've probably heard this incident many times. There was an individual by the name of Suraqa ibn Malik, who saw the Prophet ﷺ inclining towards the prize that was kept on the head of Nabi ﷺ. And with this intention, he went forward to take from the Prophet Sallallahu his life and present it to the people of Mecca. At that time, with the supplication of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala caused this individual with his horse to go into the earth and he was captured underneath the earth. And he realized his intention was not right, so he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to make dua so Allah can release him. At that time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him a news. And that's the motive of my talk, the news that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him. He said to Suraqa that, O oh, Suraqa, may Allah give you the life to see that the, the bangles, the gold bangles that is worn by the king of Persia, Allah Azza wa Jal will bring those bangles into your hand. Suraqa ibn Malik said that at this time the Prophet and his companion Abu Bakr is hiding their faces from the people of Mecca and trying to leave the city. And there are many people who are trying to go in against him. And at this time, the Prophet is giving me a glad tiding that these bangles of the king of Persia will come into my hand. It does not make sense. Just as many, many years ago, many, many years ago, those amongst our community, our family members whose forefathers from the African American community, whose forefathers fought for the civil rights, 
And those individuals many years ago, they told their children that today we are going through difficulty. But one day you will see that the same country that is not willing to accept us and considering ourselves as minority and giving us the, the logos of racism and cutting us from the masses of community, you will see that amongst in this country, you will see that the president of this country will be from our nation. As the history turn its pages, and today, we, you and I, we are sitting here and we are visualizing and we are seeing that our president is from their com community. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he came back from delivering the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all those people who were trying to harm him in any way, and he reached to the door of Fatima radiallahu anha. When he reached to the door of Fatima radiallahu anha, and when Fatima radiallahu anha saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she is starting to cry. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at her and she said, and, and he said, Ma yubkiki ya Fatima, what is making you cry, O oh my daughter? She replied, Ya Rasulullah, Qad shahaba lawnuk, wa khlawla qad siyabuk. That I've seen the difficulties that people have thrown at you, and the hardships that they have put you in. It has changed the color of your face. Your clothes have been ripped by the persecution of these individuals. I am just looking at these scenarios and this is making me cry that look at the situation of my father. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at Fatima radiallahu anha. And she said, oh my, oh my daughter, don't cry. Inna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ba'ath abaki bi amrin la yabqa ala wajhi al-ardi baytu madarin wala wabarin wala sha'rin. إلا أدخله الله هذا الأمر عزا أو ذلا حتى يبلغ هذا الدين حيث يبلغ الليل. That Allah Azza wa Jal has sent your father with such a message that you will see not a single small or a big house of this world will be left except that Allah will make this deen enter into that house. And this message of mine will not just reach the corners of the Arabian Peninsula, but rather this message of deen will reach wherever the night reaches. And as being full believing on the message of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the teachings of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my brothers and sisters, I say this to you, that the difficulties that the Muslims are going through in this country, and different types of campaigns that have been launched to bring more difficulties in the life of the Muslims today, may Allah Azza wa Jal give you and I the life, if not our children, our generation, that inshallah one day from our community, there will be that individual who will lead this country. Who will lead this country. As those people who fought in the civil right, today they have seen that. Whatever difficulties they went through, whatever calamities their fathers and their, their, their grandfathers went through, whatever situations they had to, they had to face, they had patience. وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Allah says, you adopt two qualities, the rest is in my hand. You have patience and you have full taqwa in your life. You have the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal and have patience. And how to deal with these situations? 
Allah Azza wa Jal says to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَاصْدَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ إِنَّا كَفَيْنَاكَ الْمُسْتَهْزِئِينَ You carry on your work. Don't worry about the statements of those who are trying to harm you. Those who mock you, Allah will take care of them. الَّذِينَ يَجْعَلُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ فَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ those who don't understand, Allah will guide. Those who are rebellious and those who are stubborn, Allah will take care of them. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ And indeed we know that these statements that have been in the media, that are going around, is hurting you. It brings sadness inside you. It motivates you to react. What is your reaction, O oh Habib? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fasabbih bihamdi rabbika wa kum minas sajideen. Fasabbih bihamdi rabbika wa kum minas sajideen. Glorify the praise of your Lord. The more negativity takes place on left side, on the right side, our behavior should change. Our dedication to Allah should change. Our ibadah should increase. Our patience should increase. Indeed, the message that has been brought to us by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the characteristics of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam are such no matter those who are willing to go against you, they can change. Indeed, it converted those who would be the assassins of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it converted them to a devout, a devout companion. Umayr ibn Wahab radiallahu an, after the battle of Badr, after the battle of Badr, Safwan ibn Umayya and Umayr ibn Wahab, they are sitting in Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. The narration can be found in Ibn Kathir's Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya. As they were sitting, Umayr ibn, Safwan ibn Umayya said to Umayr ibn Wahab, that there is no choice in my life after the battle of Badr. Our leaders have been killed. The life is gone hopeless, and there is no enjoyment in the life of Mecca anymore. Umayr ibn Wahab says, Wallahi, I feel the same way. If it was not due to the fact of my family responsibilities that I have on my shoulder and my debts that I have to pay, Na'udhu Billah, I will go right now to Medina and kill Muhammad. Sufan ibn Umayyah said to Umayr ibn Wahab, If that's the case, Dainuka Daini wa Ayaluka Ayali. If that's the case, then consider your debts to be mine and your family to be mine. I swear by Allah that I will take every responsibility of your children, of your wife, of your family, and I will pay off all your debts. But you go ahead and do that. So Umayr ibn Wahab said, I mounted on my, on my, on my conveyance, I, I mounted on my, on, on my horse, and I went to Medina. When I entered the boundaries of Medina, some of the companions saw me and they said to me, why are you here, Umar? I said to them, I want to talk to the Prophet. I want to have a conversation with him. As he got close to the door of Masjid al-Nabawi, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu saw him and he sensed with the understanding that Allah gave him that this individual has come with an evil intention. So he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if the brothers can come forward inshallah, there are brothers that are coming so they can have some space, to leave some space behind. If you have space in front of you, fill that up please. Thank you. Umayr radiallahu anhu said, 
as I entered Masjid al-Nabawi, Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said to me that you have not come here to talk, you have come here for some other reason. He said, no, my intention is just to talk with the Prophet because my son has been captured in battle of Badr and I want to talk to him so he can release my son. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, come Umar, sit down. He sat down. He told the Sahaba to prepare a meal for Umair. He has come from a long journey. Meal was prepared. Food was given. Dessert was e eaten. After that, the Prophet Sallallahu said to Umair, Why have you come here, Umair? Umair said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, my intention is to talk to you how you can release my son. He's been captured in the battle of Badr. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Umar, smiling with a smiley face, he said, Umar, this is not why you have come here. Ama tara, have you not seen or don't you remember the conversation that you had with Safwan ibn Umayyah in Masjid al-Haram before you embarked on this journey? Umar looked at the Prophet and he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He said, O oh Prophet of Allah, that conversation was solely between me and him, and no one else was there. How were you able to tell about this conversation? There is a divine power that is working to give you that information. Number two, you knew from the beginning that I have come here with this intention. But wallah, I have never seen a hospitality like this. I have never seen with the intention that you knew for a fact that I have come here to take care of you, to assassin you. Still, you let me in. You gave me your hospitality and not only that, but you had a conversation with me. I can only say that there has to be someone else who could come with that character. This character cannot be found on the face of the earth. This is the Nabi of Allah who Allah Azza wa Jal has given us. لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا هُوَ الْإِحْسَانِ Alman huwa al ihsan. This is a great favor that Allah has given you and I. But unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, those are still in the pages. This is the formula. This is the formula which will change all the negativity of the world. All the things. And of course, it's going to be difficult on our part. But after difficulty, there is prosperity. After hardship, there is ease. And Allah has kept for those who go through and endure patience. We all know the individual Abdullah ibn Ubay Salul, who is known as Ra'is al Munafiqeen, who went in every possible way to give difficulty to the Prophet, showing himself that he is amongst the believers. As they say in English, I love those who openly hate me, but I hate those who pretend to love me. I love those who openly hate me, but I hate those who pretend to love me. Because their harm is greater than the one that is openly hating me. So this individual, with every portion of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina as showing himself that he is with the Muslims but in reality he was working, he was running a campaign against the Muslims. And then his son, his son, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, his son, Allah Azza wa Jal granted him the true understanding of religion, so he was a true believer. When the father passed away, when the father passed away, 
And then there was not enough clothing to cover his body and to bury him. So the son came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, O Prophet of Allah, would you kindly give me some clothing? Maybe your garment will be a great cause for the forgiveness of my father so we can bury him in your clothing. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam immediately took out his upper garment and he gave it to the son to bury who? The hypocrite. The one who ran for any, every anti-Islamic campaign. Umar ibn al-Khattab said to the Prophet Sallallahu that, O Prophet of Allah, you and I know fully that this person is a munafiq. He is a hypocrite. This narration Alusi has mentioned in Ruhul Ma'ani under the tafsir commentary of the ayah in, in Surah At-Tawbah, وَلَا تُصَلِّ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَا تَأَبَدًا وَلَا تَقُمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِ This ayah was revealed at that occasion. And that narration can be found, Qurtubi, Ruhul Ma'ani, and Ayyul Tafasir have mentioned this narration. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Umar, that if my clothing can make a difference, why not? The narration continues and says, just looking at this characteristics of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 1,000 people who Abdullah ibn Ubay had prepared to work for him have all converted to Islam. They all, 1,000 of them converted to Islam for what sake? That they knew that the Prophet ﷺ knows that this individual, from day one, he was running campaigns against Islam. But at the time of his death, when he died, Nabi ﷺ was so kind to give his own clothing just to get his forgiveness done. Indeed, he has not come to take from us, he has come to give us. Like that individual who was traveling, and he seen Nabi ﷺ grazing his sheep and goats. He, he, was, he was looking at and admiring the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, do you like these goats and sheep? He said, yes, I forget like, I love them. They're, they're, they're so great, they look so nice. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, have all of them. Take all of them. He said, Prophet of Allah, don't joke with me. I mean, no, Nabi I'm not joking. Take it. All is yours. All is yours. Imagine a brother likes our car. You tell him that's the closest you can get to it. It's just looking at it. I'm not saying that you go outside and you start giving, but I'm saying adapting the character of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to diffuse the situation that we are in. Instead of doing things which indeed does not represent Islam. Which gives the negativity of deen of Islam. <coughs> so Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, take all of it. He took all of it, every single one of it. And he took it with him. He went back to his tribe. Ya, ya, ya ayyuhal qawm, O oh my people. Aslimu fa inna Muhammadan yu'ti ata'an. Accept Islam because Muhammad gives. He has not come to take from us, he has come to give us. As we have come into this country, and may Allah Azza wa Jal give every single one of us greatness, happiness in their lives, in their businesses, in their works. As we are taking from them, we should give something back to them. What do we have? We have the greatest thing. We have the formula to change the situation of the world. To remove all the misconception that have been created by ignorant individual about our faith. Until and unless we don't adapt the characteristics and the akhlaq of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no change that we can make. Verbally we can talk, but that character, every life, every individual who harmed him the most, he was most kind to them. 
giving them, opening hospitality. These are the teachings of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, as we go through these difficult times, there is prosperity and happiness on the other side of the road. The grass is greener on the other side. We have to believe in it, and we have to work for it with two things. Sabr and taqwa, patience and piety. وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا اسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة المقربين خصوصا على خير البشر بعد الأنبياء بالتحقيق أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق صاحب رسول الله في الغار رضي الله عنه وعلى مزين المنبر والمحراب أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه وعلى كامل الحياء والإيمان أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه وعلى مظهر العجائب والغرائب أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه وعلى ستة الباقية من العشرة المبشرة وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين I begin in the name of Allah, the Almighty, the most gracious, the most merciful salutations upon the chosen man Muhammad, his companions, his family members, and those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. Respect your brothers and sisters, it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has given us the deen of Al-Islam and has given us the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us the ability to implement his characters into our life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove all the difficulties and all the situations and conditions that the Muslims are going through in this country and any other countries around the globe. And may Allah Azza wa Jal bring prosperity in their life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to become the true ambassadors of Islam. Because the reality is that until and unless we would not be the true ambassadors of Islam, we cannot do any changes. The changes will happen with the decision of Allah and whenever, whenever Allah Azza wa Jal decides. But we ourselves have to bring those qualities into our lives to make, to, to, to plead to Allah Azza wa Jal to make supplication to Allah to change the situation. And if you cannot become the ambassador for some reason, then please do not become the obstacle. Because indeed, the obstacles are those who are giving bad name to the teachings of Islam and teachings of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have not been given those teachings. We have been given teachings to teach people, to bring them close, to show the love to them, to, to, to show compassion and mercy. And, and, and bring every quality of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into our life and show who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Mu'aslih dhat baynihim. Munsurhum ala aduwika wa aduwihim. Allahumma inna nadhuka Allah wa nadhuka al-Rahman wa nadhuka bi asma'ika al-Husna ma'alimna minhu ma'alam na'ala. اللهم لك الحمد كالذي تقول وخير مما نقول اللهم لا نحسي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك 
اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وعزوا أجل وهم أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون خمس صنعون